Thanks for joining us here at the Weather Channel. I'm Christina Abernathy. We'll take a look at some rainy and stormy weather coming up in just a moment. But first, our tropical update. And we want to start you out with Tropical Storm Arlene. And we actually have uh, the latest advisory that's just in. So a uh, little bit of updated information since this uh, frame. And a reminder that this storm watch is sponsored by Touchstone Energy. This, uh, the latest coordinates are, have it centered at 29.9 north and 61.6 west. That puts the center about 250 miles southeast of Bermuda. It's been moving erratically for the past several hours and a mostly northwest motion is expected to resume later on today. Little change in strength is forecast over the next 24 hours and we're going to continue to keep an eye on it. Again, movement is nearly stationary and somewhat erratic. We've seen winds 45 miles per hour. So we'll continue to keep an eye on Tropical Storm Arlene. I want to remind you that there is a Tropical Storm watch in effect for Bermuda. So interest in Bermuda, definitely want to keep an eye on this. And no doubt some heavy surf and some high waves uh, impacting the island here, especially on the east and southeast beaches. So that's one concern. And we'll continue to monitor it, and you will want to do the same. This is what it looks like on the satellite view. And again, it is expected to uh, eventually take a more northwestward track, although right now, again, movement nearly stationary. So we'll continue to watch this for you and keep you posted on all the details on Tropical Storm Arlene. Well, here's a look at what's going on in the Gulf and the Caribbean. Now, climatologically, these are favorite areas for tropical development at this point in the season in June. These are areas we look to, the Gulf and also in the Western Caribbean. So we'll continue to monitor these areas. It's somewhat unusual to see development like Arlene that's uh, out in the Atlantic, not unprecedented, but uh, maybe a little unusual. These are the more climatologically favored areas. We'll also continue to watch the goings on in the rest of the Atlantic as we head on through the rest of tropical season. And of course, you'll want to stay tuned to the Weather Channel and we will keep you posted on that. One final tropical stop takes us here into the eastern Pacific. And again, we'll be watching this area as well. If anything gets uh, developed or gets better organized, we'll certainly let you know. And of course, as always, we'll keep you updated on Arlene. Well, here's the big picture out there heading a little closer to home. This is what we're watching. We've had a lot of stormy weather out there right in here through Colorado and Nebraska. We had a lot of rain, thunderstorms, reports of large hail over an inch in diameter in parts of Nebraska and also in Colorado. We've also seen a lot of wet weather in southern Texas around San Antonio. You are getting rainfall rates of one to two inches an hour and some of the suburbs north of town had over three inches of rain and that caused some flooding problems there. Now we're also watching the eastern states. We've got a front that's draped from the northeast all the way back down into the southeast and we've seen a lot of wet weather across the southeast as a result and that's good news. Now we don't like the thunderstorms obviously but we really need the rain across the deep south. Very dry conditions and already in some areas there are water restrictions so the wet weather definitely a welcome sight. And it looks like the chance for rain is going to be in the forecast for the next couple of days across the southeast as this front's just going to sort of linger there. The northern end of our front pushing eastward, so we've got some clouds around, some wet weather around. Definitely improving conditions, though, in New York City. Still watching some wet weather in Atlantic City. All this moving off to the east, so there is still some lingering wet weather here through New England as well. Now in the south, Atlanta pretty much socked in in the rain. It's just been a real soggy night here, and it looks like that's going to continue for a while. Also over towards Augusta, you're seeing the wet weather here as well, and over towards Charlotte, the rain not showing any signs of letting up. San Antonio still getting rain, although the radar not as impressive as it was earlier. You're still getting some wet weather here, so it's been a real messy night here, and again, some flooding problems have resulted. And finally, here to the north, Denver, it looks like another batch of rain headed your way. This is where it's all going to be on Tuesday morning. Still watching rain and storms here, here, and in the northeast. So we'll keep you posted on all of that. And stay tuned. Coming up, we've got a look at your local forecast. Don't go away. This program was sponsored by Touchstone Energy. It's the power of human connections. 
Years before America's electric cooperatives forged the nationwide alliance Touchstone Energy, neighbors built their own electric utility to power lives and communities. Now Touchstone Energy cooperatives serve millions of homes and businesses. Customers large and small get state-of-the-art technology and affordable service. From the one-room schoolhouse to the communities and businesses of tomorrow, trust Touchstone Energy, the power of human connections. We are America's electric cooperatives. So you spot a termite. Problem is, he's just one of many. Beat the termites with the Terminix team and our termite baiting program. Featuring Centricon. Call 1-800-TERMINIX. No bugs, no hassle. before the hour. Thanks for joining us on the Weather Channel. You've tuned in just in time for Storm Watch. Of course, we're focusing on our tropical uh, situation because tropical storm Arlene is churning the waters of the Atlantic. This edition of Storm Watch, by the way, is sponsored by Rayovac. Here is the latest on Arlene as of the 5 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. It centers the storm at 29.7 degrees north, 61.7 degrees west, and that puts it 255 miles southeast of the island of Bermuda. Winds of 45 miles an hour. It is moving very slowly west-northwest. There you see it only five miles an hour. The estimated central pressure is 1,012 millibars. Arlene is expected to continue on this course over the next 12 hours. That will bring it closer to the island of Bermuda. Thus, tropical storm watches have been issued for the entire island. Here's a look at our latest satellite picture. We've uh, enhanced the higher and uh, the colder cloud tops to show you where the deepest convection is found. And it's basically right here in a circle wrapping around but it's not wrapping around the center of circulation the center of circulation is still well to the west of the deepest convection so that's uh, an indication that this system is not nearly as organized, of course, as it could be because for a very organized tropical system, we like to see the center of circulation in the middle of the dense overcast clouds, and that is not the case here. We've been watching a trough of low pressure to the west of Arlene, and actually this trough has been inhibiting the uh, deep convection to wrap on the western side of the center of circulation. So that is, in essence, some pretty good news actually. Here's a closer inspection of Arlene and it looks as though it's not taking on that concentric shape anymore. We're starting to see uh, an, a, a glob here kind of separate out from the main area of convection uh, but we'll continue to watch this very very closely again as it moves west northwest at about five miles an hour. Now the official forecast for Arlene is for it to get closer to the island of Bermuda and the center of circulation could very well go over the island within the next 36 hours, say tomorrow night into early, early Thursday morning. Now the good news about that is that, remember, the center of circulation is well west of the deepest convection. So if the center of circulation itself goes over the island, then that means the heaviest tropical rains and gusty winds will stay east of the island. We are hoping uh, perhaps that that is the case. Some of the computer models are taking the center of circulation to the west of the island and if that is the scenario then of course Bermuda will get some very very heavy rain and gusty winds and then some of the computer models are actually keeping the center of circulation well east of the island and that will totally miss the island altogether but the official forecast is for the center of circulation to go over the island of Bermuda as it will eventually start to take a northerly turn picking up this trough here and then with our next frontal boundary clearing
supporting the eastern seaboard, perhaps the whole system will get absorbed in our surface front. So we'll continue to watch it. Other than that, we've been watching an upper level low here in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. It seems to be drifting northward, not expected to develop into a tropical storm or anything, but it could bring some additional beneficial rains over parts of the southeast. Other than that, some higher clouds over Cuba and Jamaica, but no other organized tropical systems across the Atlantic Basin. We've been watching the flare-up along the intertropical convergence zone here in the eastern Pacific, just west of Mexico, but here we have nothing organized at the moment. Let's check on current weather now, our national picture. Here is the surface front that will eventually clear the New England coast draping behind though over the southeast so we'll still find some showers and thunderstorms over parts of the southeast. The heaviest rain this morning has been draped from central Virginia down into the Carolinas, northern Georgia even waking up to some damp roadways this morning in the Atlanta metro area and notice how moisture is increasing back across west Texas and another disturbance here over the northern plains. Wet roads on I-80. We'll be right back. What's the weather going to be like where you're traveling to tomorrow? Find out with a wake-up call from 1-900-WEATHER. Call 1-900-WEATHER, 95 cents a minute from a touchdown phone. This program was sponsored by Rayovac Maximum Alkaline Batteries. Maximum power, maximum value. Rayovac has the first alkaline battery that can be recharged, so its power lasts and lasts, and that can save you hundreds of dollars. So this Father's Day, instead of giving Dad something he'll never use, give him something he'll use over and over. Rayovac, rechargeable alkaline. Look for special savings on Rayovac chargers at these and other fine retailers. Imagine TV. I don't know, Stu. What? Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us here at the Weather Channel for Stormwatch. I'm Marshall Cease. It's just about nine minutes before the top of the hour. We have all the information for you on Tropical Storm Arlene. Want to give you the latest coordinates and tell you what the National Hurricane Center is thinking in terms of its prognosis. First, let's look at the coordinates. This is as 11 o'clock AST, which means Atlantic Standard Time, and that's generally the same as Eastern Daylight Time. This uh, tropical storm has not moved much. It's nearly stationary. The hurricane hunters, the Air Force Reserve, have been out there investigating this morning, and it looks as though tropical storm Arlene has strengthened a little bit. Looks like that's in response to some weakening shear from the west that it has encountered over the last couple of days. It is centered at 29.6 north and 61.4 west. That puts it about 275 miles southeast of Bermuda. Its winds have increased to about 50 miles per hour from the previous 45 and uh its pressure is down about four millibars. Uh, previously, it was about 1,012. It's now 1,008, and that equates into 29.77 inches of mercury. If you remember yesterday at this time, the government of Bermuda indicated that they were issuing a tropical storm watch. A tropical storm watch is still in effect. Now, the tropical storm force winds from tropical storm Arlene extend out about 115 miles. That puts it uh, about 150 miles from the outer point of those tropical storms 
storm force winds. So still has a ways to go and it is nearly stationary, but it is forecast to regain a west-northwesterly movement as the day goes on today and perhaps even further strengthening. Your infrared picture shows you the proximity to the lower 48 states from Arlene. And we have a big trough that's moving off the coast and this is going to help defend us from uh, tropical storm Arlene making any kind of an advance to the east coast of the United States. However, it is forecast to continue its movement to the west-northwest and then perhaps begin moving to the north after which it'll encounter colder water certainly and more shear probably out of the north this would be a couple of days away and then weaken considerably but before that time there is a potential for tropical storm Arlene to impact Bermuda if it moves to the east of Bermuda, which is currently its uh, official forecast, that would be good because the winds have been, uh, the strongest winds are on the east side of the uh, tropical storm. Meanwhile, if it moves to the west of the island, that would be the worst case scenario. But right now, the wind's just 50 miles per hour. Let's take a look at the center of circulation. I can show that to you graphically. This X marks the spot. That is the center of circulation. Now notice that it is still to the south and west of the convection, which is still well away from the center, and that means not much strengthening. If this were to begin to wrap around or become uh, more over the center of circulation, we would look for more strengthening. We can put this into motion for you so you can perhaps see that circulation. There you can right here and the convection still away from the center. All of that good news for uh, folks uh, with Bermuda interest. Now this big trough is what has been the uh, leading defender and the uh, uh, developer of those westerly winds that have uh, kept the uh, tropical storm Arlene from strengthening. So that's good nothing wrong here but it looks as though that westerly shear has weakened somewhat so we'll keep you advised of all the particulars of tropical storm Arlene over the next 24 hours or so could impact Bermuda as early as two o'clock tomorrow afternoon stay tuned to the weather channel for reports or at weather.com for latest reports meanwhile these clouds are all associated with an upper level low pressure system no tropical developments are expected out in the eastern Pacific either but heavy rain today is expected in the southeast due to this front and possibly severe weather out in the Coming up on Weather Center, will rain from the southeast to Texas turn to thunderstorms? And is your neighborhood at risk for flooding? Stay tuned for your complete forecast just ahead. This program was sponsored by Rayovac Maximum Alkaline Batteries. Maximum power, maximum value. Rayovac has the first alkaline battery that... time now for our storm watch. Of course, we begin tropical updates this time of the year, starting June 1st, especially when there's something going on. And tonight's a big night for one of our Weather Channel colleagues, Warren Madden. He is an Air Force reservist, and he is a part of the Hurricane Hunter crews. And he's actually going to be heading out uh, with the Hurricane Hunters tonight. I think it's his first flight heading into our lane. So we wish him luck. We sent him some uh, Dramamine, and we hope he'll be just fine. And then hopefully we'll hear from him actually later on tonight. Tune in. You may hear from Warren on the phone to give us an idea of exactly what Arlene is doing. Some good news to pass along for you regarding Arlene. I'll do that in just a moment. 5 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. So here's the advisory. 30.1 north, 61.5 west, 245 miles to the southeast of Bermuda. Winds at 50. It's moving northwest at 3. And the pressure estimated at 1,010. We will have a much better idea of what the actual pressure is when the Hurricane Hunter aircraft gets out there. So they've left. Charleston. They're about right here now, and they'll continue to make their way on off toward the east. Tropical storm watches continue for the island of Bermuda, and that is because, even though this system hasn't strengthened much, we think that tropical storm conditions could uh, impact the area, especially as we get into tonight, in the form of tropical storm force winds, 39 miles an hour or, or better. And the swells have also been incredible, 10 feet, maybe as high as 15 feet as we work our way on in time. Of course, the visible satellite imagery now is starting to get a little bit old because the sun's going down over the Atlantic, as we know. Sun's setting uh, in the west here, but starts off getting a lot darker in the eastern Atlantic and then just sweeps across the east coast. Here's the center of circulation with Arlene. One little thunderstorm on the northern semicircle 
and then the main cluster which is off to the northeast. Let's kind of zoom in on this area a little bit. Again, the center of circulation, very ill-defined. It almost looks like it's kind of unraveled a little bit. Typically, a more in, if you think of a skater, when they spin the most is when he or she brings his or her arms in. Remember that? They spin a lot. So that's when they're holding their arms in. When they let them out, they actually slow down a little bit. So as this unravels, it's kind of a sign of, of perhaps a little weakening. But then you go ahead and look at the thunderstorms and you start to see these developing on the northern semicircle. So this will be interesting to see what's actually happening here once the hurricane hunters uh, actually get out there. But here's Bermuda, that little dark dot. Here's the center of circulation. Again, this thing just drifting off to the northwest at about three miles an hour, so very, very slowly. Now, on the infrared, what we're noticing is the outer thunderstorms are collapsing and the thunderstorms which are on that northern semicircle are starting to increase just a little bit. So that's obviously something of concern because they are near the center, but you saw that whole center unraveling or, or almost getting wider there. And that definitely leads us to believe that nothing's developing rapidly. But keep an eye on this. This is definitely an interesting sign. Notice the cloud mass down here swirling in a counterclockwise fashion. That is this upper air low right here, which for the most part has helped to shear or push those thunderstorms to the north of the actual center. So that's kept it uh, pretty much in non-development state. But hurricane hunters are on their way out there with Warren Madden, as we mentioned, and right around 8 o'clock tonight, we should have a report from them as to what they're finding. There's an upper low sitting in the north central gulf, or actually the central gulf of Mexico, and there's a little weak convergence zone here over western Cuba. What's happening is we have a deep layer of southeasterly winds which are slowing down as they approach the landmass. So you're getting what we call speed convergence. In other words, if this air is moving at this speed and this air is moving at this speed, obviously you're going to get some type of convergence of the, of the differential, differential in the speed there. So we're getting some showers and thunderstorms and those uh, could develop, but right now no, no signs of, of anything developing anytime soon. So good news. We'll keep an eye on it. Showers and storms south of the Gulf of Tehuantepec. Nothing organized in through here, but certainly an area of low pressure that bears watching, especially this time of the year. And as uh, John Hope mentioned earlier, it's kind of amazing that we've had one storm already named in the Atlantic and nothing in the Pacific yet. Usually it's the other way around as this hurricane season in the East Pack starts about a month earlier. High pressure dominating a good chunk of the northern tier. What a beautiful day today from St. Louis up to Philly into Boston. There's a secondary trough which is coming through the northeast right now and that's helping to bring the cooler, drier.